Well, this weekend is a very special weekend because it's the first weekend of the year and as much as possible, what we always try to do is I like to share about the, the word in season that the Lord has for us, the theme, the vision, the direction that God has for us and it's special because 2020 is a new year, it's a new decade, it's a new season and before I jump into what the, what the word of the Lord is for us this weekend, I just want to quickly touch on what was the word that we've been holding on to for the past few years. Just a quick announcement in case some of you, you, you missed it. I've said this several times already. I remember last time, okay, when I, especially when I was growing up, we used to have every year, is a, you know, a certain theme year of this year, of that year, of breakthrough year, of something else. Um, well, as I stepped into this leadership position, I mentioned it a while back that I'm not quite going for a single year anymore. So I've changed it to a season of, of something because sometimes I find that in a year is too short. Okay, and sometimes it's a bit too limiting and we want to see and, and just flow with the Holy Spirit, see what the Lord is doing through us over time. And some seasons, maybe one year, some of it, maybe more than that, we'll see how the Lord leads us. And at the start of 2018, I shared with us how we were, enter, we were entering into a season of cultivation. And I say the season of cultivation is about growing deep, it's about growing strong. And I share with us, I, I remember I said this over the last two years, a lot of things you see like the bulletin and everything, a lot of it has to do with plants and agriculture. I don't know why, the Lord just kept placing plants in my, in, in, in my vision and in, in my mind all the time. And I think it's really because of this promise that I've been holding on to, which is in Zechariah 8, 12. And it says this, the seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. I've been holding on to this, that as we are faithful to what the Lord has called us to do, we will see growth. We will see a mighty harvest coming. And so with that, the Lord gave me this, that word, the word cultivation. The word cultivation is very important, especially when you're talking about agriculture. All right? What is cultivation actually? Cultivation is basically the process of preparing the ground for the harvest. Okay, you must prepare the ground. When a farmer, they, when they're trying to grow whatever crops they have, they must cultivate the land. They must prepare the land. You know, sometimes we don't think much about that. We talk about how do we want a plant to grow, a seed, all right? Oh, we must, we must make sure that there's water, there's sunlight and everything. We must make sure we get a good seed and so on and so forth. But the thing is this, you know, a, you can have the best seed. You can give it all the sunlight. You can give it all the water. But if you put it in bad soil, it will not grow well. It will not last. That's why I said we must go through a season of cultivation, preparing the ground so that we can grow deep, we can grow strong. You know, so what if we have a tree, a tall tree, let's say a, a tree that's four stories high, okay? But yet its roots are shallow. You know, if you have such a tree, right, all you need is one simple storm. Strong winds, a strong rain, the whole tree will go down. So it doesn't matter what happens on the surface if the roots are not deep. And so I said for, uh, for us as a church, we must come and cultivate this land. We must, we must change our church culture, the church environment, so that it's a place we can grow deep into God, we can grow strong in our faith. In Colossians 2.7, it says, Let your roots grow down into Him. Let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. So over these last two years, We've been spending time cultivating the church culture we want to have. We've been redigging all wells. We've been coming back to the basics. We talked about the basics of missions, the basics of serving the nations, of evangelism. We're introducing different types of ministries to meet the needs of, of the church and the times right now. And I feel that God is leading us into a new season right now. Now, I just want to say this. Even though we may be, it may be a new season, it may be a change in the year and everything, Cultivation is not something that happens one-off. Cultivation is a constant process. We have to keep doing it. So I'm not saying that we're going to stop that. But I feel that in this time, God is giving us a new word. He's giving a new focus for this season ahead. Why do I keep saying it's a new season? Well, for those of us in FCBC who are familiar, we, this, is, well, this is the first year that you have a new senior pastor. I was installed last August as the senior pastor. And I remember before that installation service, I was asking God for a word. I said, God, I need a word. I was thinking back and how every time, if you've been in our church long enough, uh, you hear my dad tell the story of FCBC about how in those moments, God gave him a word about this uh, church. We talk about the word from Haggai 2, which says, the glory of this house shall be greater than the glory of the former. And in this house, there will be peace. 
And that's a word that the Lord gave to him. And if it's a word for him at that point of time, it's a word for this whole church. And I believe that word will always be special to us as a church. But I said, God, now I'm taking on this leadership role. What is your word for me? What is your word for this church? And the Lord brought me to these two verses. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21. And it says this, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. As I pondered over that word in the, in, in la- a few months ago, one thing was very clear. God said this to me, that it is time for us to go beyond. B-E-Y-O-N-D, beyond. That word beyond kept ringing in my head. I kept thinking, you know, and what does it mean to go beyond? It's time for us as a church, as a people, to go beyond limitations, beyond barriers, beyond borders, beyond our fears, beyond expectations, beyond weaknesses, and the list can go on and on and on. And I kept that, all these things kept ringing in my, in my mind. And I kept thinking, we must go beyond, we must go beyond, we must go beyond. But I thought, that doesn't sound nice. There's no ring to it. And I was like, I can't call it the year of go beyond, the year of going beyond, or the season of going. This sounds very weird. So I asked, God, give me, give me a line. Give me something that we can all rally behind, a, a rallying cry for this new season. And God finally gave me that rallying cry, that one line. And I'm here to tell you what this line is. And this line is the theme, is the direction for this new season ahead. Are you ready to listen to it? The theme, the direction is this. To infinity and beyond. (laughs) This church, we as a people, we are going to go to infinity and beyond. We're going to see greater things. We're going to see newer things. I know we all laugh because it's from Toy Story, you know. I, I shared this with the staff, huh? and at our staff dinner, the youth staff gave me this present, okay? They gave me a plushie of, of Buzz Lightyear. Some other staff have given me, I, I received two marks over Christmas that, has, that says to infinity and beyond. But I like that. That I believe God is calling us to go to infinity and beyond. We're not called to live in the status quo. We're not called to settle. We're called to go beyond. And if you come back to Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, the official version I'm using is the New Living Translation. I like it. It says this, All glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Why don't you turn to the person beside you and say, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> you know, what does it mean? When we, when we watch Toy Story and they say to infinity and beyond, why does Buzz Lightyear say Because well, he's a space ranger, he's in space. And in space, it's like, there's no limit. There's, there's no limit to it. There's, there's such a big expanse there. So when we talk about going to infinity and beyond, it means that there are no limits. It means we must have a faith that says that there's no opposition too strong. There's no barrier that's too high. There's no place that is too far. There's no mountain too big, no ocean that is too wide, no task that is too big for us to overcome and so on and so forth. See, today, the word that God has for us is that there are to be no limits. There are no limits because we serve a limitless God. There are no limits. Tell someone else beside you, say no limits. limits. But let's pause here for a moment. All these, as you can say, no limits, we can say to infinity and beyond there, these are great slogans. They sound nice. We can come to church and we can say them every week. We're so happy to say them and repeat them. We print them on stickers or whatever. But what, what happens when we actually go into this year? And we face real opposition. We face some kind of sickness, some kind of fear, some kind of obstacle or whatever it is. Well, today I want to tell you this. We're not just going to chant some kind of slogan until we get past it. No, today I want to tell you that God will always enable you to go to infinity and beyond. He will enable you to overcome the obstacle, to get through that situation. You see, we don't go to infinity and beyond because of ourselves, but because of who is with us, because of who is in us. So today, I want to share with us two very simple things. I want to answer this question, what enables us? What is it that will enable us to go beyond, 
to go beyond your current situation, to go beyond your fears, beyond expectations, beyond your own abilities, beyond whatever it is, what will enable us to go beyond? Two things I want to share with us. The first thing is this, number one, what will enable us to go beyond is firstly, our accessibility to God. And when you know that you have access to God, you realize that He grants us power. What is accessibility? Literally, it means to have access, to have access to God. I think we don't talk enough about this. It is a very important truth to talk about the access we have with God or the access we have to God. See, we talk a lot about knowing God, but knowing God and having access to God are two very separate issues. Let me explain that for a while, okay? Let me give you this simple example. I, Daniel Kong, okay? Can I tell you something? I'm not, not here to brag or anything. Can I tell you that I know the Queen of England? I, I know Queen Elizabeth. I know Queen Elizabeth. I can tell you a lot about her. I was there during the Diamond Jubilee uh, celebration. I was in London itself. I was there at the, at the event and everything. I know her. In fact, I can go and give you a lot of details. I can read up a lot of different things. I can research. I can give you a lot of different information. I know her. But can I tell you something? No, I can know her. I can know every single detail of her. But I will never, ever have access to her. I can know her. I can know which year she was coronated. I can know uh, her age and everything. But I can't pick up the phone tonight and say, hey, Elizabeth. <laughs> I can't ask her out to go to Yakun or whatever. We can't, we can't hang out. Why? Because I have no access to her. And I don't think I will ever have access to her. See, knowing someone is one thing. Having access to that person is a totally different matter. You see, we always talk about knowing God. Yes, we can know God and we talk a lot about knowing God, but we forget. Sometimes we forget that we have access to God. We not only can know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we have access to Him. And that's why I say when you know you have access to Him, you realize that He has granted you power. Let's come back to Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Let's look at that for a moment. That word there, ask, it's so important. Do you realize, church, you and I, we get to ask the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We get to talk to Him. We get to make known our requests to Him. That is access right there. In fact, I don't have this on the slides, but I, I realized this just now. If you look earlier in Ephesians 3, actually, I think it's Ephesians 3, 12. It talks about how through Christ Jesus, we can access God boldly and courageously. See, we have this access that has been given to us. And today, I want to say this. When you talk about this verse, Ephesians 3.20, you know, I want to point out something very interesting here. It says, God can do infinitely more. We know it says, He can do exceedingly, abundantly more. But you know, I think sometimes we don't look at the whole verse all together. Let me explain this. Huh? You know, if I say that, if we say that God can do more, you know, that actually doesn't make sense by itself. So let me explain it. Let's say, let's say between myself and any one of you here, let's say, let's talk about, uh, I don't know, like watches. Let's say watches. Let's say I got, let's say I say, I have more watches. Okay? This statement, I have more watches, like, like that, right? Do you realize it doesn't make sense? It doesn't make sense because if you use the word more, there must be context given. What are you comparing yourself or this thing with? So for example, I cannot say I have more watches than that's it. I can say I have more watches than so and so. I have more watches than this person or whatever. Only when you have the full context, then that word makes sense. So we, no point in saying that, oh, God can do exceedingly, abundantly, infinitely more. More than what? Well, the verse right there says, more than what we can ask. The catch here, the catch to accessing God's power is that we have to ask. And I think sometimes that's the thing, we don't ask. And I think, church, the reason why God is giving me this word to say that we have to go to infinity and beyond is because God is bringing us to remind us we must ask of Him. Ask big. Dream big. Ask God for those breakthroughs. Ask God for, for, for miracles. Ask God for signs and wonders. The question is, do we dare to ask? And I think we need to come back to having this faith to ask God again. You know, I was, I was reading two instances of Jesus healing these two different people in the Gospels. The first example was found in John chapter 5, verses 2 to 9. It says that inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the pool of Bethesda, where people often go there, people with ailments, they'll go there into that pool. 
with five covered porches, crowds of sick people, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, they lay on these porches. And one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? This man said in verse 7, I can't, sir, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. And Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. That's a great, great account that we read there. We see this man being healed. But there's another healing that took place in Mark chapter 10. Let's compare with that. Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. It says this, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. They called the blind man, cheer up. Come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. Two instances, both people got healed, but yet it was so different. Let's take a look at Mark chapter 10 again, verses 51 to 52. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. And instantly the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. If you compare these two cases, the outcome was both people got healed. But yet, the circumstances were very different. And as I look at it, I come to this conclusion. The first case about this lame man, okay? Was he healed? Yes. How was he healed? He was healed by the grace of God. Okay, honestly, by the grace of God. Jesus took pity on him, healed him. But here you have this second man, Bartimaeus, who was calling out to Jesus. And when Jesus asked, what do you want? He said, I want to be healed. He asked for that healing. And God, what did Jesus say? Your faith has healed you. That's who I want to be, you know. I want to be that person who dares to go up to God and ask Him. And when God says, what do you want? He say, I, I want breakthroughs. I want to go beyond. And finally, at the end of the day, God will look at me and say, Daniel, your faith has caused you to get that breakthrough. Your faith has caused you to go beyond. Your faith has caused you to experience something you've never experienced before. That is what I want to hear. If you look at that first man, he was resigned to his to his ailment already. He was resigned to the fact that there was nothing beyond his situation. He had accepted the status quo. Jesus said, would you like to be healed? What did he say? I can't. That's the first thing he said to Jesus. I can't be healed, sir. And what does he do? He proceeds to give excuses. Oh, you know, to be healed, I need to go into that pool there for, to recover and everything, but I can't make it to the pool. And even if people help me to the pool, by the time I get there, it's been filled with other people already. I can't be healed. Uh, uh, through this. He made an excuse. But when you look at Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus didn't make an excuse. He made an effort. What happened? Bartimaeus, he heard that Jesus Nazareth was coming. What did he say? Son of David, save me. And what did people say? Shut up. And what did he do? He shouted louder. Son of David, save me. He was not going to take no for an answer. He, his faith was that big. He asked, but he didn't make an excuse. He made an effort. And he asked God to be healed. And just think about it at that moment. Huh? He could have asked for anything, you know. He could have asked for all the money in the world. He could have asked for all the, all the best relationships in the world. He could have asked for the biggest family. He can ask for anything, but he'll still be blind. He said, God, I want to see. And today, church, I pray that we see the access that we have to God, the access we have to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, this access that grants us power. Ephesians 3.20, all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us. His mighty power is at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Church, today, I believe that many of us have forgotten how to ask. Some of us, we've forgotten that we can ask. And today, it's time to come back to be daring to ask God again. You know, just, just 
just this week, I was having uh, breakfast with Pastor Eugene the other day, and we were just talking about uh, my journey in this church. And I shared, I shared one thing, you know. I mean, back then, when, when I was a youth, okay, after I finished secondary school, I continued serving in my scout troop in my secondary school uh, unit. And I remember when I was there, right, that was when I was really serious about God. In fact, that was the time when I found my 12, okay, my first time when I found my 12. Because I said, God, I believe that you can use me. I said, God, I'm going to take this faith challenge. I believe in 12 weeks, I can bring 12 people to know the Lord. So every week, I invited multiple people. And every week, I brought one person to church. And after 12 weeks, 12 people came to church. And after that, I said, God, there must be more. I was telling Pastor Eugene that I, I devised this, uh, this, this idea. I said, you know what? A lot of, we do a lot of leadership training in, in the school unit. I bought a book, which was 52, leader, uh, 52 Leadership Principles Through the Life of Jesus. It's like a 52-week uh, curriculum. I bought that book. And I said, I want to teach this to, the, to my scouts. I, I, I had a, the our scout troop was about 120 uh, uh, people strong. So I remember I even prepared consent forms. Right? I, I said, you know, this is a Christian school. I want to do a leadership course, but I want to teach it through Scripture, through the Bible. I sent it to the parents. The parents filled out the consent form. 90 of the scouts came back. And every week I got, I got, to, I got, to, pre- I got to teach them about Jesus every single week. Why did all these things happen? Because I said, I asked for more. I said, God, I want to... I want, I believe that my scout troop that can be saved. I believe that my school can be saved. And I believe that there are people here that at one point in time, we used to ask, God, give me my school. Give me my workplace. Give me my neighbourhood. You know, asking God is the very DNA of this church. If you recall a few years, I mean, not a few years, I mean, more than 10 years ago, my dad, there was a book about my, my dad. He wrote uh, this autobiography. It's a small book with a picture of his face, shared about his journey in the church and everything. Do you remember the title of that book? Tomorrow, I'll bring one for the service to see because some people don't know what I'm talking about. He had this book that shares about his journey. The book was entitled, Give Me the Multitudes. What is that? That is asking. That is asking big. And church, we need to rise and say, we want to ask God again. We want to ask God to say, Lord, I want to believe you for greater and greater things. Recently, I was, I was in Australia. I met up with my my friend, Pastor Gary, is the senior pastor of Metro Church there. And we're just talking about different topics. And he mentioned something to me. He mentioned this, this interesting point, this interesting truth of life. He said this, you know, proximity brings power. Proximity brings power. When you find that when there's somebody in a position of authority, or there's someone who is the most talented, or the richest, or whatever, or the most ability, whatever, people tend to congregate around that person. Okay, sometimes, sometimes you have, if you have a very rich person, a lot of people want to be friends with the rich person. Right? Because I may never be rich, but if I hang out long enough with this person, I can live like a rich person. I'm in the proximity of that person. In fact, this principle, we see it happening in Scripture as well. You know, a lot of people follow Jesus, right? One of the reasons they followed Jesus was because they thought he would be the new king that would overthrow the Roman Empire and restore the kingdom of Israel. And when he becomes the actual king on it of the land, well, guess what? Hey, I'm Jesus' friend, you know? I know him. I'm one of his 12, you know? Suddenly, everybody wants to be his 12 now. That, that's why the disciples had the argument. They asked Jesus, Jesus, who among us is the greatest? Because they, they, they understood that proximity brings power. And today, I'll tell you this, you know? You have access. You have proximity to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We have access to Him. We can ask Him. And when you ask Him, you're going to realize that He can do infinitely more, exceedingly more, abundantly more than what we can ever ask or think. Today, we need to come back to asking God. I think some of us, we've, we've lost that. Maybe I, sometimes I think I myself have lost it. But we have to come back to this and say, Lord, I want to ask you. I want to ask for a dream. And I'm, not going to, I'm going to ask big. I'm not going to ask for my own glory. I'm going to ask for your glory, for your purpose. I want to ask you for great things because I want to glorify you through my life. So that's the first thing I want to share with us. What is it that enables us to go beyond? Well, the first thing is this, our accessibility to God. And when you have access to God, you know that He grants us power. His power works within us. But there's a second thing that I want to share tonight. Not only do we have accessibility to God, and not only does that grant us power, but the second thing is this. We have authority from God. So firstly, he, he, His accessibility grants us power, but authority from God because 
He gives us position. God gives us that position in our life. Today, I want to talk about the importance of authority. Sometimes we, maybe we, we don't talk enough about this thing called authority. Why? Because we live in a world that doesn't focus so much on authority, but we live in a world that focuses on this other A word. This A word is ability. We live in a world that always focuses on ability. See, sometimes we get into a situation, all right? Okay, we see that we need to go beyond, but we think, I can't go beyond. You know, why do you say you can't? Why do you say that I cannot overcome this obstacle? I cannot get through that. Why do we say that? We say that because we are focused on abilities. We look at this situation, then you look at yourself and say, wow, I have no ability to overcome this. That's why we come to the conclusion, I will not be able to get over it. But I want to tell you something, on very honestly. Right now, all of us here, we don't have the ability anyway. We have zero ability. You see, when it comes to God, it's not about ability, it's about authority. Truly, if you face that obstacle, you face that situation, you and I don't have that ability to overcome it. So don't focus on the ability. Instead, focus on the authority that comes from the one who has the ability. If you look at Ephesians 3.20 again, all glory to God who is able. He is able. He didn't say that all glory to God who makes you able or means you are now able. No, He is able. And His power is at work within us and we can access that power. See, this is authority. If you look at uh, John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14, Jesus said this, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. That is about authority right there. How do we end when we pray? We always pray, in Jesus' name. See, that is calling on that authority. See, we have been positioned as children of God. You are a son, you are a daughter of the living God. If he is the king of kings and the lord of lords, and you are his son, then you are a prince. If you are a daughter, you are a princess. And you have the, because of that position, you have the authority to call upon his ability. I want to share with you, the, import, the, the difference between authority and ability. And actually, this is, a, I modified it a little bit, but it's an analogy that my dad always shares. And I remember I heard it when I was a kid. He's never forgotten it. Let me share with you. Ability. One, one example of ability. Ability can take the form of a man by the name of Edward Hall. He's 32 years old this year. He's a professional strongman who holds the world record for the heaviest deadlift. Okay? He, has the, he holds the record for having a deadlift of 500 kg. 500 kg deadlift, okay? That is ability. Okay, if you don't know what a deadlift is, you put 500 kg on the weight and it just lifts it up like that, okay? 500 kilos, half a ton, okay? Half a ton. That is ability. Authority is a police officer who can stop a 3,000 kg truck that's moving at 50 km per hour just by doing this. <laughs> that is the difference between ability and authority. And sometimes we don't realize the power, the authority that we have in Jesus' name. We don't realize that the authority does not come from some government, does not come from, from some earthly king, it comes from the creator of the heavens and the earth. That is the authority that we have. And if I talk about ability and authority, the classic example in Scripture is David and Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4 to 11. Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over 9 feet. I think that's about three, close to 3 meters uh, at all. He wore a bronze helmet. His bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He wore bronze leg armor. He carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was, was very tiring to read this whole bit. He's got so much armor. He sees, he's a man of war. Then you look at verse 8. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you, why are you not coming out? Why are you all coming out to fight? I am the Philistine champion. You are all only the servants of this man called Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, we'll be your slaves. If I kill him, uh, you guys will be our slaves. So today, verse 10, I defy the armies of Israel. Send me a man who will fight. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. 
Why were they shaken? I'll tell you why they were shaken. Because they were focused on ability. They look at Goliath, wow, this guy, this behemoth of a man, this giant, three meters tall, he's got the best armor, best weapons, everything. He, he's, so, he's so intimidating. And we're just these small guys, we can't, we can't defeat him. They're looking at ability right there. And they were so terrified. If you read on, I think it was verse 16, for 40 days, every day Goliath woke up. Go there and make fun of them. 40 days, 40 days, this whole army, they were stricken by fear because they were only looking at ability. Then came this young man, David. This David who was not trained in warfare. He was a shepherd. He was a young man in verse 32 to 33. What does he say? Don't worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Saul replied, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight him and win. You're only a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. Again, focusing on ability. This guy is a warrior. You're, you're only a boy. Focusing on, on, on ability. Then you come to verse 41 to 45. Goliath walked out toward David with his shoe bearer ahead, sneering in contempt at the ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog that, he, that you would come at me with a stick? He's calling David a stick. He's so small, it's like a stick to him. And he cursed David by the name of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. What did David say? Verse 45. I love this. Favorite, one of my favorite verse in the whole Bible. You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Whew. I mean, there's something else, you know. That is a man right there who understands authority. He did not say, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but you know what? I'm quite handy with a sling and rocks, you know. I know how to use a sling. I can shoot one into your head and I can take you out. He didn't say that. He says, you come against me sword and spear and javelin. I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Church, that is the authority that we have. That is what I'm talking about there. If you want to be honest about that, I don't think that David had the ability to, to defeat David. But what he had was the authority. He came in the name of Jesus. The, Holy, the, the, the presence of God was with him. It was in him. It went before him. And that was what gave him that victory. See, when we realize our position as children of God, then we understand the authority that we have. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The Bible that we're called children, little children. But yet we have overcome because he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. You know, this is one of the reasons that I purposely, I, I, all the more I enjoy this, this tagline or this, this theme to infinity and beyond. Every time I say to infinity and beyond, or people laugh, oh, that's from a children's movie. Be I like that. I like this from a children's movie because until we understand what it is to be a child again that has access and as position as a child of the Most High, we're never going to see. We're never going to go beyond. Today, God is calling us back to this, to ask big, to dare to dream, to go to infinity and beyond. And I believe that God is leading us to this. God is bringing us to a place that, that, that He has in store for us. And you know what? I, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to let this church settle. We are going to go beyond. So today, these are the two things that I want to share with us. What is it that enables us to go beyond? Number one, accessibility. The accessibility we have to God and that He grants us power in all situations. And number two, the authority we have from God. And that comes because He has given us the position, not as slaves, not just as servants, but as sons and daughters. And we have that authority. Today, we need to come back to asking. You know, earlier last year, God placed a certain burden in my heart. That burden came to me when Celebration of Hope was coming around. And the Celebration of Hope was coming. There were some prayer meetings. I was leading one of the prayer meetings. I don't know, some of you, maybe you were there, you remember. It was right here at TC. I was leading that, that prayer meeting. And 
we were praying, you know, that people are going to be saved, we're going to see lives change and, and all that. And suddenly, a burden came upon my heart. And I remember I told everyone to stop praying. And I asked everybody this question. I said, do we believe that people actually can be saved at Celebration Hope? Do we believe that Singapore can be saved? And I said this, if we don't believe that, nah, then what are we doing here? If we don't believe that, there's no point in all those prayers. It's just going through the motion, praying because that's the right thing to do. But if we don't believe it, then what's the point even in praying it? And I, and I just started thinking back that I feel that we as a church, we've forgotten what it means to ask. We've forgotten what it means to ask God for a dream, to ask big, to dream big. Remember, yeah, I, I, I look back at the past, not to revel in days of old, but to learn from it so that we can continue to go beyond. I don't want to settle, neither do I want to go back. I want to go forward. I want to go to what God has in store for us. But remember at FCBC, we, when we wrote our own music, you know, we, we have a few, I mean, our standard song, It Is Now. And we, we remember the song, uh, We Believe With All Our Hearts. Remember, we sing that song, it's we, like, we believe with all our hearts, this land will be safe. And God one day put a burden on my heart. He asked me, Daniel, does FCBC actually believe this? And I actually, I, I couldn't answer. Because I'm not sure. And I cannot speak for everyone, at least I speak for myself. I was not sure. And I think, I think back, we've lost a certain thing. And while it's, I, I think back to some things in the past, well, it's a bit funny, but remember back in the, before we had Vision 2001, okay? I always thought about this. Remember that video that my dad made and a lot of different pastors go there. Then there was one video where there was a green screen. My dad walked into this MRT carriage. Okay? And in the MRT carriage, he said, God is good. And everybody said, all the time or something. Or he said, praise the Lord. And everybody said, hallelujah. And the, the heartbeat was, we believe that everybody can be saved. We will see that day that this nation can be turned Godwards. And we had that belief. We dared to ask God. But over time, we stopped asking. Sometimes maybe because of disappointment, then we just stop asking and, and so on. But today, it's time to come back to asking. It's kind of, you know, sometimes you grow older. As you grow older, we're a bit more pisey to ask. Because when we grow older, we try to be more independent. But you go and look at any child. No child is pisey to ask the parent, you know. Okay? Now, I mean, when you, when you, when you grow older, I mean, let's say me, let's say I... Uh, I'm in some financial situation. I'll probably go to my parents. Oh, oh dad, mom, uh, you know, if you, if you don't mind, you know, I got some, I made some mistake. I, I, I need some finances. Last time we were a kid, daddy, I need $10. You just, you just ask. That's, that's the kid. The kid is, is like that. We just ask. And I think we need to come back to that childlike faith of going before the Heavenly Father and say, Lord, I want to ask you. I was very affirmed because this is the word that has been stirring in my heart. And a few months ago, I was talking to Pastor Eugene Seo and he shared with me the word that God gave him for Touch International. And it comes from Psalm 2, verse 8. It says this, Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. I mean, how fantastic is this? You know? This Bible that we have, our, the word of God, is that it talks about the power of God. So much. All you see about the power of God. But yet, God, with all His power, in all His ability, in all His glory, calls out for partnership. Can God just say today, hey, any of you, you want the name? I, I, tell you what, forget it. Don't even ask. I give you right now. He can do that. But instead, He says, ask of me. Ask of me and I'll give you. What is His Word say? Now to Him who is able to do infinitely more than what we can God wants partnership with us. He's calling us to dream big for Him, to ask of Him. Today, we can be like the lame man at the pool of Podesta, who in the end still experienced that miracle. But between him and Bartimaeus, I want to be Bartimaeus. Son of David, save me. Shut up. Son of David, save me. What is it that you want? I want to see. I want that breakthrough. I want that new beginning. I want to go beyond. I want to go beyond my own limits. I want to go beyond this situation. I want to go beyond this obstacle. I want to go beyond my fears. I want to go beyond my struggles. 
Let's ask God for this. Recently, especially towards the end of last year, we've all, I'm sure if you've been reading on social media and online, one very famous case that was floating around was what was going on in Bethel Church. If you remember, uh, the daughter of uh, some of the worship leaders, her name was uh, Olive Hailey Genthel. She passed away, stopped breathing. And the church and the parents were rallying and they were getting people to pray and believe God for a resurrection. Now, we are all entitled to our own opinions. All I'll say is this, for myself, I, I, cannot, I don't believe I have enough information to form a conclusion. Even if you say I can read everything, there's so many, it's so many different opinions online. It's so, it's so muddy on there. I don't know them personally. I cannot form a conclusion. So what's the best thing I do? I read something like that and I reflect on my own life. And I think about it. In my 10 years, so this, this just 10 years, I mean, talk about this decade. In this 10, this 10 years, I've been a pastor. In my 10 years, I've never experienced a resurrection before. Do I believe that God can, res- can raise the dead? Of course He can. But I'll tell you why I've not experienced a resurrection in 10 years. Because I've never asked for one. I've never prayed for it. We all well, thought resurrection very big thing, right? Some of us here, we never experienced healing before, supernatural healing. You will never experience supernatural healing until you go out and pray for it. Until you do it. Until you ask for something big. And today, we, we, we got to do that. I remember it was... Reinhard Bonnke, who teaches this, you know, because someone asked, a reporter asked him once, eventually it's Reinhard Bonnke, if you pray for someone and he doesn't get healed, what do you do? He says, I pray for the next person. What if that person doesn't get healed, healed as well? He says, I pray for the next person. And I'll keep praying and praying and praying. And if I pray for 100 people and only one person gets healed, I will celebrate and I will rejoice. That's, that's the man of faith, you know. That was the faith that, 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 that Reinhard Bonnke had. Because he was not shy in asking. He knows the access he has, the authority that he has. James chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. There are two reasons that are given here why you don't don't receive. Well, one reason you don't receive is because you ask with the wrong motives. The other reason that you don't receive is because you've never asked. You will never ask how you expect to receive. And God is saying, we've got to learn to ask God. Church, we need to come back to this heart of, of, of believing God. You know, this word to infinity and beyond is really not just some catch line to me. It's not some slogan. It's a, these are words I take very seriously. Because these words matter a lot to me. This, 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 well, maybe officially it will be something that we use for the next for this season ahead. But I, I'm claiming that these are the words I'm going to live by for my entire ministry. That I'm going to ask God. See, if I, if, if I live a life of settling and thinking this is it and I'm happy with the status quo, then I can't tell you something, I won't be here taking on this leadership position. I'm here because I believe God has a beautiful dream for this family. I believe God has a promised land in store for us. I believe that God is calling us to go to infinity and beyond. God is not calling us to be in the status quo. I'm not happy that I I never want to be caught trapped wandering in the wilderness. I want to be like Caleb and Joshua who looks at the promised land saying it's a good land, it's a land full of milk and honey. I don't want to be like the other 10 who just say, oh, it's filled with giants, it's filled with fortresses, it's difficult. You know what? I want to go beyond. And I pray that we are all here together on this journey to go into the next season ahead. God is calling us. God has something in store for us. And woe is me if I settle. And I'll say this right now. As we enter into this new season, as I take on this leadership position, I will not let this church settle. I will not let any leader here settle. And leaders, you will not let any of your members settle. Because this church is called to go beyond. If you look through our 33 years of history, this church has been been defined by how we go beyond. 
today we're here. It's so beautiful. We have the staff of Touch Community Services and Touch International here. That came out of the DNA of this church that this church will go beyond. We're not going to settle for the status quo. We just come for service every weekend. We come here, we sing some songs, we learn the Word of God. We're not going to settle for that. We're going to say, God, we're going to go beyond. We're going to go out beyond the walls of the church. We're going to go into the community. We're going to go and minister to the needy, to broken families. We're going to go out to the nations. If there are disasters, we're going to get out there. Because there are no limits. Because we serve a limitless God. We're going to go wherever He calls us, to infinity and beyond. He who is able to do infinitely more than we can ask. And today, we need to ask. But to some of us here, as you hear this message, you know that you've, you've, we've lost that, that. We've lost that heart that asks, that dreams. And, some, I, and I just penned down, when I was preparing this message, I penned down some reasons why sometimes we don't ask. And I've put down a few things here. Sometimes we don't ask because we actually believe in ourselves more than God. See, you won't ask for help if you think you can do it. So sometimes we, we like to be independent, we're trying to do things ourselves, so we think we can do it, that's why we don't ask. But remember, if, you know, if we have the ability to do it, uh, then what's the point of praying? There's no point in praying. If I can do it, I don't need to go to God. If, if I, if me as an individual, as a human being, I got the power to heal people, uh, I can touch you and you're going to get healed, then I, what for I pray? But instead, when we pray for him, well, I pray like mad. Sometimes really, what? Well, you really, God, God, really, we need a break. So you pray because we don't have the ability. It comes from God only. And when you know that you are unable, then you will call on the one who is able. The second thing I wrote, sometimes the reason we don't ask is because we focus on our inability instead of God's ability. See, when you focus on your own inability, you won't ask. You won't ask God, God, give me more. Because if you think you cannot make it already, why would you ask God, God, give me more? God, I want to be a, I want to be a pastor. I want to be a leader of multitudes. I want to impact this nation. I want to change the world. We won't ask for that if we think we cannot one. But like I said, don't focus on your own ability. I tell you right now, all of us cannot one. And I, I, was preaching at the, I was preaching at the youth service earlier this afternoon. I said, some of y'all, the youth, y'all don't dream. Because you say, well, I cannot want a pastor. I don't know a lot. And, and, and I said, do you, I actually asked this a few weeks ago. I said, the youth service, y'all believe or not? The next senior pastor could be seated right here. The next pastor of the church, the next leaders of this, of this nation can be right here. They say, oh, cannot want, you know, oh, cannot make it one. I tell you, if I look back at my childhood self, I also cannot want, you know. Those, if you've been in, those who have seen me grow up in church, yeah, you remember that I'm, I, I, I quite naughty one last time, lah. Last time I come to church, I bring a bag full of toys on. I'll play my toys all over. I still remember one service at TC here. I was over there. and get seated at this front row here, around where Edmund. I, Edmund, you, I see what you're doing. You know what I'm talking about. I had two toy guns. Then I started to, I lay on the floor. Okay? I lay on the floor. And back then, in the early 90s, you know, all the John Woo movies, everything, the, the, the happening action film is all like that. All the hero all roll. They roll, 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 roll. So I did that lah. I, on the floor, I roll, 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 and I kept shooting my dad until my dad said, Daniel, can you stop it? You're very distracting. <laughs> Gonna scolded by my father in front of the whole church. I, I think back, uh, I go back in time, I look at that person. That one senior pastor. <laughs> but it's, it's not about the ability. It's what God can do through us. God desires this partnership with us. Many of you here, you, you, you keep saying, I can't, God, Pastor, God cannot use me and help me win my school, win my office, win my colleagues. I, 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 cannot, I, cannot be, I cannot reach out to them. One. You can't. Stop focusing on your ability. Remember, you've got authority. We pray in Jesus' name. Some of us, our parents, I think we stop asking because of disappointments. You have asked before, but it never happened. You ask again, still didn't happen. You've been disappointed two times, five times, ten times, twenty times, a hundred times. And after a while, we say, don't ask better. Why? If I don't ask, I will never be disappointed. Because we have that fear of disappointment. We don't like being disappointed. It's like, we are disappointed like something dies in you. Right? But today I want to say this, are you going to let that fear of disappointment rob you of your destiny in Christ? Let's not do that. Today we may, we may have been disappointed, but can we have the tenacity to keep asking, to keep dreaming. Yes, God, you know what? I didn't, I didn't make it this time, but I'll try again. Just like right up, you keep trying and trying again. You know what? 
as you try. Will you encounter failures? Of course. But only when you try, then you've got a chance to succeed. Right? Okay? If you never ever try, you will never ever win. You will never ever encounter a victory. You will never ever see God moving in your life. Isn't that what, what, um, isn't that what Pastor Caesar always says? If you're going to see what you've never seen before, you've got to do what you've never done before. You've got to try. So let's not let that, that disappointment stop us. But the last thing I wrote, some of us, the reason why we don't ask, right, is because we don't know that we can ask. We don't know that we can ask. We don't know about this access we have to the heavenly king. This access we have to God that we can call upon him and that he is a God who hears us, who listens to our prayers. And he says, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. He says, you do not have or you have not because you ask not. Today, it's time, it's time to start asking God. It's time to start dreaming big. I, this church is defined by our heartbeat to, of asking and dreaming big. Asking God for the multitudes. Asking God for, for, for so many things. We go into having a theatre. We go into having shows around the world. Why? Because we ask God to bring His gospel to the ends of the earth. Today, we must have that same spirit again. To say, Lord, we're going to ask for more. Don't settle. What was the biggest, what was the biggest problem of the Israelites when they were brought out of Egypt? They were brought out of Egypt. They were going to go to Canaan, to the promised land. What should have been probably, what, a six-day journey there about? Took them 40 years. Why? Because when they got into the wilderness, they started complaining. They complained, no food, nah, no this, and say, wow, you know, back in Egypt, we had all this, this. Why was that? That spirit of complaining there, right, was a certain desire to settle. They, they would, they asked, I want better food, I want better conditions, because they're trying to make the wilderness a comfortable place. But guys, it's a desert. It's a wilderness. It's a barren place. It's not where we're called to settle. Why do we try and, and make our bed in the, in the wilderness? And because of that, we miss out on the promised land, the land that's flowing with milk and honey. Today, in church, in this new season, that's it already. To infinity and beyond. Ask big. Don't settle. Don't ever settle. Today, this, this first weekend is really just this time for us as a family to talk about this season ahead. But I know... There are many of us here that this message resonates with you. It resonates with you because some of us, you've forgotten to ask. Some of you, you've been hurt, you've been disappointed and you're afraid to ask it. But you know what? This is that new season that God is asking us to rise up. God's word tells us, behold, He is doing a new thing. Do we not perceive it? I, I, I remember, I, I took on, well, while my dad did spend time preparing the church, preparing me to take on this role, you know, I took on this role with fear and trembling as well. I, I, in 2019, I was, I, was, I was fearful. Can I do it? Am, am I the right man? And, and you remember at the installation service where my dad shared about God's sign to us through what happened between him and Grace Baptist Church. I remember when, that, that weekend when I went to that service with him to Grace Baptist Church. My dad didn't cry much, you know. It was quite odd. He's, he's a big crier every time he comes to this kind of thing. He didn't cry much at this. So he was very happy. It's like, almost like reunion, go and see old friends. Huh? During the whole service, I was weeping away. You know? This place, I mean, in a sense, it, it meant nothing to me. I've never been there before. I don't know who these people are. I was weeping and weeping and weeping. You know why? Because honestly, in 2019, I struggled. I, I, I was fearful. Am I the right person? And I remember, a lot of people may think that, oh, this whole Grace Baptist thing, it was a sign for my dad. It is, but it's as much as it, a sign for him as it is for me. And, then, and God said, Daniel, this is it. I'm telling you. And with that, I know for, for sure. Ever since then, I've never asked again, you know, oh, am I God? Are you sure? I know. I, I, I'm, I'm sure already. And that's why I know this word to infinity and beyond. It's for all of us. We, <laughs> this church is called Faith Community Baptist Church. We are a community of faith. A community of faith must always go beyond. And it's time for us to do that. It's not, let's not settle anymore. As I close this service, I, I really want today just for a time of ministry and a time of us just responding to this word. 
you know, most time I want uh, the worship leaders can come out. We're gonna we're gonna close with this song that we sang earlier on, um, "Spirit Lead Me." And that's, I mean, what a way to enter this new decade, saying, "Spirit Lead Me," saying, "Lord." Whatever it is, my fears, whatever, whatever is holding me back from going beyond, Lord, I want to let go of it. I want to drop it. I just want to, to follow you. And as we sing this song, so I know some of us, we need, we need to respond to this message. Later on, when I, give, when I open up the altar, tonight, there's some people here, you don't have a dream. But you hear this message and you say, I want a dream. Well, ask God for that dream. You come to the altar, and I don't know, I don't care how packed it is. We all get out of seat. You can't find somewhere because I, there's always something about that physical step. You say, I want to step out of where I am. God, I want to go and seek you. If you don't have a dream, say, God, I want to ask for the dream. And every day when I pray, I'm not just going to pray for my own wants and desires. I'm going to pray and ask you for a dream. God, give me for a dream. A dream that is bigger. A dream that is something I can't even imagine. Others here, you had that dream but you've either lost that fire for that dream, you've forgotten it, you've stopped asking, maybe there was disappointment along the way, I don't know. But today, it's a new season. You come and you respond as well. And you're say, God, I'm going to ask for more. There's some of us say, you don't know the access you have, that you can ask. God wants you to know you can ask Him. There's some of us say, today we're focusing on our own inabilities. God says, you know what? You don't have the ability, but I'm giving you my authority. All these things, Jesus said, right? the things that I've done, you will do as well, and even greater things you will do. Today, we must come and respond. We say, Lord, I want to ask. And I know there's... My heart goes out to those who have been in this church for a long time. You've been with us through the ups and downs, and many of you, I, mean, I, I thank God for you. You've been around far longer than I have in this church. I mean, I've grown up and everything, but... I haven't spent that much time serving this church. But you've been there and some of you, you I know for those who've been around, this resonates with you because you know what I'm talking about when I say those days of us asking and dreaming. And you've lost that. But today, God wants to come and breathe this breath of life upon you afresh. I don't know about you, I'm very excited for this season ahead. I'm still working a lot of things. I, I, I don't know everything that I have in store, but this is, the, this is the word that I'm claiming for this season ahead. This is the word that I'm putting out to this church here tonight, and it's up to you whether you want to receive it or not. But I pray that we all do. And we'll stand together as one family, and we, we stand together, and in all childlikeness, in all, I don't know, maybe even a little bit of childishness, we stand there together, hand in hand, saying to infinity and beyond, because there's no limit when it comes to a limitless God. Let's all stand up right now, both here and over there at Suntech. I'd like us to take some time to pray together, to pray for one another. That in this season ahead, we're going to believe that God will lead us to infinity and beyond. That whatever situation you're in, you're not called to be in that status quo, you're not called to remain there, but you're called to go beyond that. So I don't know what is that obstacle you're facing. What is that difficulty? What is that struggle? But we're going to come and say, Lord, lead us beyond this. I'm not here to settle in a situation. I'm here to go beyond. So I want you to do this right now. Can you just turn to the people around you, okay? In a group of two or three people. I know some of you with your family or with your cell group. But why don't you come and take some time to pray over each other. And some of you, you know that there's something you need someone to pray over together with you. There's something that you, you just feel like you can't overcome, you can't go beyond that. But let's declare by faith today. Let's ask big and say, God, we're going to see that breakthrough. Some of us, you're asking, you're dreaming big, you're asking God for the multitude as well. Ask God and declare it. Ask in His name. As we end off this time, I just want to share this last thing with us. You know, probably sometime late uh, in the next couple of months, I, I actually want to do a series through the entire book of Ephesians. It's a great book to, to learn through that. 
But I just felt led to, to share this right now because the intercessors gave me a word. And the word here is that there's someone here, you cannot believe that you can have access to God because of your past, of the things that you've done. You cannot believe that God loves you enough to grant you limitless access. And this intercessor said, God wants to restore your faith in Him. You know, before we close, i just share with you this last interesting thing. Ephesians 3 is a very interesting passage. Ephesians 3 talks about this thing called the mystery. In the first portion, it talk, it's the mystery of how God has called us heirs and partakers of His promise. And then the second part that talks about the purpose of His ministry. And the purpose of His ministry is that we can come boldly and have access to Him. Then the last part, when you read about Ephesians 3.20, it is the appreciation of this mystery. When you appreciate the mystery of how God works, He will go before Him and ask Him with all boldness. You know, it's a, how God works is a mystery at, at times. I don't know why God calls us. I don't know why God wants to work through us. But He does. And sometimes we kill ourselves trying to understand it. It's, it's a mystery. But let me tell you this church, enjoy the journey. It's a mystery. I, I, I tell you the greatest mystery I've had this year, okay, is how this church of ours has such a great impact in the nations. Whether it's through the thing, I mean, through TCS and Gateway, we've got open doors to China, through uh, TI, we've got open doors to different nations as well, through the G12 vision. Just, just last week, I was on... I was on vacation in Jeju Island and Pastor Lee Sambang asked me to go and preach at their church. And there's so much honour for us. It's a mystery how God works. But we just need to enjoy that journey. Can we all just stand up right now? And I'm just going to close off in a final prayer. And I don't know if you're that person here tonight you feel like you cannot believe that God loves you so much to give you unlimited access. Well, it's a mystery. But He does. His love cannot even be comprehended by our own human standards. And so let's lift our hands over this place. I want to bless you right now. Lord, we stand together here as a family and we declare that You are able to do infinitely more, abundantly more, exceedingly more than what we can ever ask or dream of. Lord, I pray that I want to speak courage and strength over every person here that you will have that bonus to ask of God you have that bonus to dream big for God and that you and I none of us here will ever settle but we'll say Lord we want to go to infinity and beyond Lord we believe that you go before us you are in us you lead us and you will never leave us nor forsake us Lord, we want to rise up to be the faith community that you have called us to be. And we are going to go beyond, beyond the four walls of this church, beyond this nation, beyond borders, beyond all obstacles, beyond even our own expectations. We are going to go beyond because Lord, you are calling us there. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this word for this season ahead. And church, I bless all of you that you will receive this word. And in this new season, you're going to experience the power of God. You're going to experience the grace of God that is at work in you. So I bless you. I set you apart. And I pray that in every situation in this season, you will always ask God for more. Remember, sometimes we have not because we ask not. But today I bless you that you will always ask big, knowing that God the King of kings, the Lord of lords is our heavenly Father. So I bless you with this. I set you apart. I release you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give Him all the praise. Give Him all the glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. You're dismissed. We'll see you back here next week. Tell someone beside you.